Would you mind getting me that box of rice down there? This one? No, the one on the bottom. Sure. Oh, yeah, baby, get the rice. <laughs> With that? Yeah, it helps that your butt looks really good today. You think? Uh-huh, you're having a good butt day. <laughs> so I should keep parting it in the middle. Oh, <laughs> Clean up on aisle six. Uh, Dharma, that's code. They mean us. Don't be silly. With the couple on aisle six, please clean it up. <laughs> See? Code. Wow. I wonder what price check really means. I don't know. <laughs> price check! Whoa! <laughs> hey, Dharma. Hey, wow. Look at you, Greg. Look how big she's gotten. Oh, it's hard to believe. Do we know her? <laughs> Honey, it's Donna from the Express Lane. Oh, Express Lane, Donna. <laughs> So, you and Jimmy must be getting pretty excited, huh? I guess. Uh-oh, what's wrong? Jimmy left. What? What happened? He told me that he was being transferred to New Zealand, but I saw him yesterday at 7-Eleven. <laughs> what did he say? He pretended he wasn't him. <laughs> I hate it when guys do that. What guys do that? Honey, we're here to be supportive. I thought we were here to shop. <laughs> You just let it out. Come, 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 come. This lane is closed. She can't do that. Hey, I've seen her close an interstate so ducks can cross. <sighs> I don't know what to do. I can't raise this baby by myself. Well, can't your parents help you? Dharma, you know my parents. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know her parents? Honey, she's our checkout girl. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to give this baby up for adoption. I'm just not ready to do this alone. But Donna, you are not alone. You have me and Greg. <laughs> Thanks, but it's not the same thing. I want this baby to have two parents. You know, a mother and a father. Like you guys. Hey, maybe you could adopt my baby. Yeah! <laughs> It's because our bed is nice and comfy. Now, you can't expect a pregnant woman to sleep on a ratty old air mattress. No, I expect her to sleep in her home. That's my little system for the world. At the end of the day, everyone returns to their own home. Come on, it'll be fun. It's just like camping. Yes, it is, except we're not outside and you volunteer just to adopt a stranger's baby. <laughs> Donna is not a stranger. She is our checkout girl. Dharma... I understand. When you go to the supermarket, you're at the register, you might pick up an impulse item. Gum, nail clippers, a horoscope if you're feeling nutty, but come on, not a baby. You know what? You might be right. Why don't we just get some sleep and talk about it in the morning? Fine. But I really don't think that I did it. In the morning. Okay, but I still... <laughs> We're not going to solve this now, so let's just give it some time. Dharma, this is a huge decision. We should both agree on it. Of course. So if I give it time and I shit, still... Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Forget about it. For now, let's pretend that we're camping in the redwoods, making love under the harvest moon. Oh, man, I gotta pee. <laughs> Next to a big waterfall. So is this checkout girl cute? <laughs> What's that got to do with that? Well, she's not seeing that guy anymore. Maybe you can introduce me. Peach is having a baby. Yeah, but she's giving it to you. <laughs> no, she's not. Hey, how long after they have the kid do they keep making milk? Oh, 
Seek professional help. You are ill. Hello? Hi, you're here. Hi. Come on in. Yeah, sorry we're late. Strong headwind on the bridge. You biked here? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we. Yeah, we don't want to participate in a fossil fuel addiction foisted upon us by multinational corporations. Yeah, and, 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 and. And, and so from now on, we will use the energy of our bodies to transport us instead of exploiting the planet we live on. Well, what planet would that be, Larry? <laughs> That we couldn't talk over the phone. Um, Dharma and I are having a little problem, and I could really use your help. Is it about sex? No, no, no. Because Dharma understands when you're tired. Uh, good. No, this is, um, about a baby. You're having a baby? No, no, we're not having a baby. There's a girl who works at our supermarket, and she's pregnant, and Dharma wants us to adopt her baby. Oh, the girl who works at your supermarket? Yes. Do you know her? No, not at all. Wow. Like, just taking a stranger's baby into your home and raising it as your own. I know. Greg, it's your first random act of kindness. I'm so proud of you. Oh, yeah. So do you think being adopted had a negative effect on you? Heck no. Turned out fine. <laughs> Get out of that fish, you stupid bracelet! Hey. Hey, Daddy Tom. <laughs> yeah, where's Dharma? I wasn't feeling so good, so she took over my shift at the supermarket. She's working as a checkout girl? <laughs> Well, what's wrong with being a checkout girl? No, nothing. Oh, yeah, then how come you went to lawyer school instead of checkout girl school? No, I just... No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's my fault. I'm just... I'm a horrible person. No, Donna, you're not. It's just... Do we have any cookies? I'll go get you some. Thank you. And don't cheap out that Pepperidge Farm! Man... I think this is the wrong fish. <laughs> Bacon? <laughs> really? Don't you love yourself? I'm not sure. I love bacon. what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set this bacon aside, and I want you to think about if you really want to eat. But I like... Bop, 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 just think about it. Donna, what are you doing? Helping people. <laughs> Process <clears throat> cheese food. I should think about it? That's my boy! Karma, we need to talk. No problem. we got a six-minute break in two hours. Uh, we need to talk now. Okay, then you're gonna have to bag. Paper or plastic? Uh, plastic. Really? Paper? Got you. Oh, what's going on? I want to talk about the baby. The idea's grown on you, hasn't it? No, it hasn't. I've thought about it, I've slept on it, and I really don't think it's a good idea. Well, Greg, you didn't sleep on it. You tossed and turned all night. That's because I was thinking about well, it. Then you need a good night's sleep. But I can't sleep. Well, then you shouldn't make a decision. No, the answer is no. The answer is no. I'm sorry, Dharma, but you can't help every human being on the planet. Matt, Greg, but you can't help the ones that are right in front of you. Well, if we want to help this girl, we should put her in touch with one of those organizations that are set up to handle this kind of thing. How can you be so cold? How can you be so irrational? Oh, so you're not suddenly irrational to want to adopt your supermarket checkout girl's baby? <laughs> yes! How can... But, Greg, but, I, I, but, but, don't you bup up me. But you bup up me all the oh, time! Oh, my God. What? what? I've thought about it, and I don't want the bacon, but I do want the cheese. Fine! <laughs> I'm out of here. Goodbye. Oh, and I'd like a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, buddy, I am this close to giving up on you. <laughs> hey. Hey! How'd it go? Um, well, I kind of got fired. Why? Well, three people in a robot veal, and I just couldn't stop crying. <laughs> Where's Greg? 
I don't know. He never came back here? No. Oh, man. What's wrong? Ah, <sighs> Kate, listen, Donna. Um, I know I said that we'd adopt your baby, but I messed up, and I really should have talked to Greg first. He doesn't want the baby? I'm sorry. It's just Greg's a planner. I mean, he won't even get on a plane without knowing where it's going. <laughs> Damn. I know. It's like, how do you go on vacation? <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Damn it. You're angry. Come on, just feel the feeling. Oh. Yeah. I think this is it. Oh, labor. Oh, oh. God, this is great. <laughs> okay, take a deep breath. Good. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Right. How do you just in time, John, is having your baby? Okay. Let's not panic. <laughs> Panicking, Greg. Good, because we shouldn't do that. There's no need for it. Um, <laughs> let's just, uh, we'll get her things and we'll go to the hospital. Why? She's not sick. Dharma, people have babies in hospitals. Yeah, I know. Isn't it horrible? <laughs> She's a midwife, unless you think that you and I can handle it alone. Oh, no, no, no. You're not going to do one of those home birth things. Oh, well, we don't exactly have time to get her into the woods, now do we? <laughs> Hello, uh, Abby. Hi, it's Greg. Um, no, no, I didn't see it. No, I, I'm sure it was a bitch in sunset. No, listen, Abby. <laughs> you got to get over here. Donna's having a baby. Uh, hang on, hang on. Hello? Dad, I can't talk right now. I gotta get Abby over here. Donna's having the baby. Abby, how soon can you get here? Don't worry. We'll be there just as fast as our little legs can pedal. Pedal? No, Abby, don't take the bikes. Please drive. <laughs> no, Edward, tell me exactly what he said. He said he had to get Abby over there because Donna is having a baby. Oh, Edward, Donna. Who is Donna? <laughs> I don't know. It's Donna. <laughs> Donna. Is pregnant. Oh, don't you ever listen. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure that he's. Oh, said I told you. I told you this would happen. I told you that one day we would lose our son to those people. And now look, our first grandchild is on the way and they are celebrating without us. Come on. Oh, Donna. I... <laughs> come on, come on, come on. How's it going up there? Uh, you know your favorite pillow? I don't have a favorite pillow. Good! I need a hammer. A what? A hammer. A hammer? Oh, honey, why don't you just wait for your mother? Donna needs crushed ice. Listen, Greg, I talked to Donna, and I told her that we can't adopt the baby, and I just, I'm really sorry that I put you on the spot. It was totally unfair. Oh. Oh, well, uh... Thanks. I mean, you have a right to feel the way you do, and I just shouldn't have tried to force you into it. Oh, uh, it's okay. I just have to remember... Ugh! You and I do things differently. <laughs> That's true. Um, listen, Darma, I have a friend from law school who specializes in adoptions, and I'm sure he can find a terrific couple to adopt the baby. Great. That's great. <laughs> It's my charm bracelet. I thought I lent that to Jane. That's weird. Um, that's for understanding. I'm sorry I was so wool about it. Well, I mean, you can't make a decision that's going to change the rest of your life on the spur of the moment. I did when I met you. Yeah, but that's different. Bup, 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 bup. Hi! Uh, I gotta go. Is there anything I can do? Just answer the door. How'd you do that? I heard the elevator. I hope, I hope that's your mother. Not nope, your mother. Gregory, it's your mother. I don't know. That was just totally freaky. <laughs> hello, hello. What are you doing here? Gregory, don't you have something you want to tell me? Uh, stop by any time. No need to call. Gregory, when were you planning to tell us about this baby? Oh, that. I don't know. Why would you even care? Oh, Edward, do you hear what your son is saying? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> There. What do you think's going on? A woman's having a baby. How long were we in Europe? <laughs> Gregory, this is not making any sense whatsoever. It's really very simple. Our supermarket checkout girl, Donna, is having a baby and we're helping her. I'm sorry, what was that name? Donna. <laughs> Donna. Oh, bully for you, Edward. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank God you're here. Knob yeah. Hill. Very, very, very... Uh, very... bumpy. <laughs> yeah. 
Busy, bumpy. Uh, See? <laughs> and here, I got a good one. <laughs> How far apart are the, uh, the contractions? I don't know. She's upstairs. Okay, well, let's get to work. Hi, Kitty. Come on, you can help. You're not going to take this girl to a hospital. Why? She's not sick. Well, then maybe you can uh, give her a hand. Well, I don't know anything about childbirth. What do you mean? You had me? Oh, Gregory, don't be vulgar. <laughs> Donna. Where are they taking her? She's having the baby in the bathtub. I beg your pardon? People have babies in bathtubs. I like to read in there until I get pruny. Edward, you're surrounded. Don't abandon me now. Oh, crap! 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 Larry, that is very annoying. The bell in general, or just this song? <laughs> Edward, I don't believe etiquette requires that we be present at the birth of a child whose mother works in our daughter-in-law's supermarket. We can see the baby. Huh? It looks just like this. <laughs> Don't you want to get in there and see your child being born? Your child? What are you talking about? Dharma and Greg are adopting Donna's baby. The baby's looking at me. Hands up! Hands up! <laughs> Oops, I'm the photographer. You are going to adopt that girl's baby? Donna. <laughs> we, we thought about it, but we decided not to. <laughs> Thank God. This was Dharma's idea, wasn't it? Yeah, well, sort of. At least you have some sense, Gregory. That girl would take in every stray cat in the city if it weren't for you. Well, it's not a cat, Mother. It's a child. Of course, of course. But there are organizations, you know, that help girls when they get into this condition. That's what I told her. Good. As a matter of fact, I am hosting a benefit for unwed mothers next month. A wine-tasting cruise. <laughs> Actually, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody's dressing as wenches and pirates. Still, this. There's something to be said for getting in there and helping someone who's right in front of you. Oh, for God's sakes, Gregory, that's what nuns are for. <laughs> Believe me, you did the right thing. You don't make a snap decision on the spur of the moment that's going to turn your life upside down. I did when I met Dharma. We've got a big, healthy baby boy! Five, 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 and one! <laughs> <Don't wait. laughs> I changed my mind. I want us to adopt the baby. Really? Yes, really. Are you sure? Absolutely. I want to do this. I love you. <laughs> hey, you guys, we're going to do it. We're going to adopt the baby. Dharma, that's wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we decided on the wine tasting cruise, didn't we? <laughs> we changed our mind. Come on, everybody. Meet the newest member of our family. That's a black child. <laughs> Abby, I hate this. Saving the planet was your idea, Larry. We'll give up the washing machine. No! And let go of my fender. I can't pedal anymore. You can't just stand up, Ridge. You're right. I'll wait here. You ride home and get the van. Yeah. You wait right here, Larry. Abby? You're coming back, right? Abby?
I'll have the scongili. Excellent choice. Thank you. One question. What is it? Well, it's a... No, no, no! Okay, don't tell me. I want to be surprised. <laughs> How can you order something without knowing what it is? How can you order the same thing every time we go out? I do not. He'll have the penne marinara, half a Caesar salad, dressing on the side, no anchovies, and bruschetta to start. No, I'd like the special. Don't tell me what it is. Wow. <laughs> Very good. It's not fish, is it? Uh, no, sir. Or fried or spicy. Would you like me to tell you what no, it is? I'm sure it's good. <laughs> tell me what it is. <laughs> He'll have the penne. I, I would have eaten it. I'll tell the chef, sir. He'll be thrilled. <laughs> um, listen, uh, something um, came up today that we need to talk about. What's that? Well, I got a case that will require me to go to Washington for a week. Oh, cool. Good for you, honey. Well, I, I'd have to leave the day after tomorrow, but uh, if you don't want me to go... Do you want to go? No, of course I don't want to go. Then don't go. No, I, I want to go. <laughs> then go. What I meant was, I don't want to be gone that long unless it's okay with you. Honey, it's totally okay. Good. <laughs> you know, we haven't spent a night apart since we got married. What about the night you fell asleep at Jack's girlfriend's house? Bring us a bottle of wine. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Any 94 Cabernet. California, but but not Sonoma. Uh, you pick. Jeez, I wonder what we'll get. Fred, wake up. Yeah. Greg, wake up. What? Greg, I just had a really, really bad dream. You cannot go on your trip. But you just said that I could. No, but that was before all the facts were in. What facts? I just told you I had a dream. <laughs> I'm sorry you had a bad dream, but that's no reason for me not to go to Washington. Greg, it was a terrible dream. I mean, the plane dropped out of the sky. It was in flames. So was the dessert you had last night. I know the difference between dessert and an airplane. It was a plane. All right, it had the mustache and hair under its wings, but it was a plane and you were in it and it crashed. I can't change my plans based on a dream. Didn't you ask me if it was okay with me if you went? Yeah. So what would you have done if I had said no? We would have talked about it. Until I said yes? Yeah. <laughs> no. Tell you what, why don't I just take a different flight? You already bought a ticket? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Darma, can't you be reasonable? Of course I can be reasonable. We'll call Abby. I'll have her throw your tarot cards. <laughs> and then if everything checks out, then you can go. What if I say no? Well, then we'll talk about it until you say yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Claiborne on line two from Washington. Can I call him back? I'm in an important meeting. <laughs> I'm having trouble getting a clear reading. Um, Greg, would you mind holding this crystal to your forehead? Yes, I would mind. Greg! Can we just move this along? Deal a card, hit me. Death! Hit me again. Don't worry. Don't worry. Death doesn't always mean death. Sometimes it does. Well, sometimes it just means a change is coming. It's like dying. That's a change. So's a haircut. I didn't dream you would die in a fiery haircut. <laughs> The office staff wants to know if you're bogarting anything in there. It's just incense, Marlene. Uh-huh. Abby, forget about the cards. Tell Greg how accurate my dreams are. Oh, they're very accurate. It's eerie. Yeah, tell him about your Uncle Mike. She dreamed he was going to die, and two weeks later he did. That's terrible. Actually, it was a relief. He'd been very, very sick. <laughs> okay. Abby, look, wouldn't you agree there are other interpretations to Dharma's dream besides my plane crashing? Yes, the plane crash can symbolize all kinds of things. But, like, Dharma just doesn't want me to go. Well, that's one possibility. Thank you, Abby. Or Dharma's not being satisfied in bed. What? Well, think of it, Greg. I mean, the airplane thrusts upward and then 
falls impotently to the ground. Okay, my point is, it could be a lot of things. It's like a plane crash. No, no, you know, I don't think so. You know, let me throw the cards again. Greg, this time hold the crystal over your penis. <laughs> There are no towels in here. There aren't? No. Oh, that's weird, huh? No towels, huh? No, I have a plane to catch. Oh, that's today. Yeah. Right. Oh, you know what? Here. Why don't you use some of these, and I'll see what else I can find. <laughs> Go on, Ma. There's only one Kleenex in here. I'm sorry. I'm looking for more. No. Find me a towel. I can only do one thing at a time, honey. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Found one. Thank you. Oh, jeez, this smells like the dogs. Well, honey, it is their towel. I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work. Where are my suits? Dry cleaner. All of them? Oh, we had coupons. Okay. I'm just going to go to the office and get the suit that I keep there. You keep a suit at the office? Yes. You have secret clothes that I don't know about. Whoa, honey, you need to sit down and we need to talk about this. Karma, I have to go. I'll buy socks and underwear in Washington. I'll call you when I get there. Oh, bad news, honey. Your car won't start. And why might that be? Uh, not sure this came off. <laughs> why don't I just call a cab? Our phone's out of order. Oh, yeah, I know. I wrote them a letter about that already. <laughs> you forgot this, didn't you? Dharma, okay, stop you, it. You, nope. No, I don't want you to go. This Greg. is ridiculous. Okay, okay, okay. You're right. I'm acting totally crazy. Ha ha! Honey, listen, I understand you're upset, but that's only because we've never spent a night apart. Except for the night you fell asleep at your ex-girlfriend's house. All I'm saying is you're upset that I'm going away, and that's why you had the bad dream. Boy, I really don't think so, Oh, come on, Greg. I can't imagine what it's going to be like to be away from you. It'll be like the night you fell asleep at your ex-girlfriend's house, except repeated seven times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I promise that I will call you the minute the plane lands in Washington. Promise? As soon as we hit the ground, smoothly, on the wheels. All right. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Oh, have a good trip. I'll see you next week. Yeah. Bring back that Miami Vice no socks look? Yeah. Dharma hid my socks. I got an extra pair. Can you carry on? In my pants. Come on. I've never wanted anything less in my life. So why'd she hide your socks? She really didn't want me to go. <laughs> Jane drove me to the airport. That was nice. Yesterday. And Arma had this silly dream the plane was going to crash and she kind of overreacted. Wait a minute. The plane is no. going to crash? The plane's not going to crash. Well, what are you, insane? We're, we're talking about Dharma Pete. here. I mean, this is a person that knows when people are going to die. Damn, nothing's going to happen. Hey, hey! It's all right. I'm with the Justice Department. Hey, I'll man. take care of it. I'll... Oh, man. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I'm a young man. I've I, I got so much I never got to do. Pete, you're not going to die. <laughs> I am so scared right now. Hold me, Greg. I'm not going to hold you. Hey, I'll hold you. Oh. I'll see you on the other side, buddy. Bring... Ring. Oh! Ah! Hello, 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 hello. Oh, thank God.
glad you're okay. I, I'm I'm fine. Oh God, I was so scared. The flight was perfect. No turbulence, nothing. Not a bump, and I've never felt better. How do you know you're not in heaven? Because <laughs> Pete's with me. I'll call you from the hotel. I love you. I love you too. Okay, we can all go to sleep now. Daddy didn't crash on a mountain and have to eat his buddy Pete. You can come up. It'll be our little secret. Up you go. Okay. Come on, you can you can lay on Greg's side. Come on. You'll be great. There you go. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Come on, it's you. That's a good boy. Bad boy. Okay. All right. Good night, baby. <laughs> you know what? <coughs> Somebody needs to learn to brush their teeth. Oh, yeah, baby. You know what I like. <laughs> yeah. Who are you talking to? My wife, do you mind? <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, <laughs> you know what I like. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> That's not it either. Come on, that's gross. Nobody likes that. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> you won't take my word for it? Here. Will you tell Jane I've been a bad boy? <laughs> oh, there you go, Stinky. So beautiful. Look, just like Mommy. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, ten till five. What should we do now? Oh, Nunzio. I'm thinking Mohawk. <laughs> Jane. You sleep? What? Oh, good, you're up! <laughs> hey, listen, I just want to thank you again for staying over. You're welcome again. <laughs> you know what's weird? I'm tired, but I'm not sleepy. Huh? Isn't that weird, huh? Weird. Yeah. Do you miss Pete? I'm starting to. <laughs> you know it would be fun? Sleeping. <laughs> I wish. No. I was thinking... We could go to the supermarket and slide up and down the aisles in our socks. You know what else would be really fun? What? It's gonna be cool. Try this. Okay. Okay. Close your eyes. Okay. Now shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just ever since I met Greg, we've spent every night together. What about the time he fell asleep at his ex-girlfriend's? Yeah, I try not to bring that up. Well, you know what? Because I care about you, hmm? I'm going to help you out here. Where are you going? Back to my place to sleep. <laughs> well, how does that help me? In the morning, you'll be really tired, but you'll still be alive. <laughs> no. Jane, please don't go, Jane! I'll let you kill me! <laughs> Darn, Molly. <laughs> 
doing here? I got kicked out of the supermarket for no good reason. <laughs> what time is it? It's almost done. Want to watch the sunrise? Oh. Abby, you're talking in your sleep. No, no, it's Dharma. Dharma, honey, there are no monsters. Go back to your own bed. <laughs> oh, my God, you're huge. Go back to sleep, Larry. Wrong, baby. You never crawled into bed with us unless there was a problem. I just can't sleep. Oh, do you want me to tuck you back in, pumpkin? Larry, she's grown up. She lives across town now. Your mother will tuck you in. You miss Greg, don't you? I can't sleep without him. Oh, sweetie. Oh, I know what that's like. When we first moved here, your father used to forget and go back to our old house all the time. <laughs> Nice couple, though. They'd always send him home in the morning. Well, were you able to sleep at night? <laughs> like a baby. In fact, Darm, would you mind if I got a little more sleep right now? We went to a dulcimer concert last night, and it got really wild. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure, sure, sure. Mm. Ah. Are you going to go back home? No, I think I'll go in the living room and draw on the feelings wall. Oh, nice. Oh, God. I just had the strangest dream. Mm. Dharma was all grown up and lived across town. And we finally had a Democratic president. <laughs> but we weren't happy. Oh, Larry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble sleeping, too. Um, hang on a second. <laughs> I'm trying to follow the story. They're night nurses and they're naughty. What more do you need to know? I'm sorry, Pete's going through his briefs. What, what, what did you say? I've never had insomnia before. Not even when you fell asleep at your ex-girlfriend's house. Um, listen, why don't you just why don't you just fly out here and stay with me? Uh, no, I really need to work through this on my own. Well, you sure? Yeah. Plus, I have classes and I can't cancel them. And you and Pete are busy working. That's it, baby. Say, ah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we're re real busy working. Um, listen, honey, just j try to get some sleep. I will. I think I'll be okay now that I talked about it. Okay, I love you. Oh, yeah, baby. Take his temperature. I love you. <laughs> Okay, boys. Tonight we sleep. Okay, but first, who wants to pee on some trees? <laughs> you walked here? Well, Stinky and I walked. We took turns carrying Nunzio. <laughs> it's almost ten miles. Yeah, it's a lot longer if you don't know you're coming here. <laughs> hey, do you want to go for a walk? Dom, is something wrong? Does something have to be wrong for me to want to walk my mother-in-law? <laughs> I can't find the Frank Sinatra album. Do you think we can do this to Vic Damone? <laughs> oh. Hi, Dharma. I'm sorry, did I come at a bad time? No, 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 no. I won't be ready for an hour or so. I'll be up in a little while, Edward. So will I. What is it? Uh, Kitty, I have a real problem. And all my friends are sick of hearing about it. So you came to me? I'm sleep deprived. What can I say? <laughs> is this because Gregory's out of town? Yeah, I can't believe how much I miss him. And that's it? Your problem is you miss your husband? <laughs> Kitty, I wasn't wearing my glasses, and it seems I have taken one of your sleeping pills. Oh, that's all right, Edward. So did I. Oh, <laughs> good. That worked out. Good night. <laughs> Let me know when you have a real problem. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, honey. Yeah, I guess I was sleeping. Hey, I was sleeping! <laughs> hey, listen, I'm sorry I was such a nut, but you were right, that stupid plane crash stream was just me freaking out that you were leaving. And you know what, I talked to your mom, 
and I realized that I'm really lucky that I miss you. You know, with a sleeping pill and a little sherry in her, she's kind of nice to talk to. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm babbling. Uh, what's up? I just called to say I'm going to be a little late. See, I thought it was a direct flight, but apparently we have to change planes in North Dakota. Okay. <laughs> Give me one of those. And so we commit to the ground the earthly remains of Doris Haviland. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Oh, that's kind of a downer. <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> just, just let him finish, Doc. Well, don't you think we should say something? We barely knew her. Well, we can beat dust to dust. <laughs> I'd like to say something, please. Dearly beloved... It's it's just me, Dharma. Oh, and you're dear and you're beloved. <laughs> Doris Haviland lived in our building. She was a neighbor in the truest sense of the word. She was a person who lived near us <laughs> in our building. That was beautiful. Thanks. Greg, do you want to say anything? No, no, you clearly knew her better than I did. And now, let us bow our heads and uh, bid a farewell silently <laughs> to Doris. Your journey has come to an end. I don't think so. Sorry, honey, go back to sleep. It's just a ghost. Like you had a, a pretty spooky dream last night. Oh boy, it was awful. Thank God Doris's ghost woke me up. Uh huh. So, do you want to do something today? Maybe see a movie? Oh, maybe when I get back, yeah. Where are you going? Well, I have to go to the post office and buy some stamps, and then I thought I'd help the landlord pack up Doris's stuff and see if I can't figure out why she is haunting the physical room. Bye, honey. The post office, you say? <laughs> Hey. Hey. You've been down here a long time. Everything okay? Craig, I feel terrible. Five years I lived in the same building with this woman and I knew nothing about her. Like, I had no idea she collected hats. I wonder what made her collect hats. I don't know. Maybe, uh, stamps didn't keep her head warm. <laughs> what is that smell? Menthols. Door smoked menthols. Look, her last pack, not even finished. Yeah, that's usually the way it works. <laughs> what exactly are you are you looking for? Well, I told you, Greg, Doris has some unfinished business that's keeping her spirit from moving on, and I have to find it. Dermot, there's no ghost. You had a dream. Well, what about seeing Doris in the graveyard? How do you explain this? The same way I explained it when it happened. You saw a statue lit up by lightning. No, Greg, you saw a statue lit up by lightning. I saw Doris. Oh, my God. Look. Unfinished business. She's tethered to this earthly plane because she didn't pick up her dry cleaning? You would be. 
the, the only thing hanging around here is 40 years of cigarette smoke. There are no ghosts, goblins, vampires, demonic black cats, or anything. Ah, okay. <laughs> so there's a cat. Doesn't seem like unfinished business. I know, that's what I thought. Uh, ordinary dry cleaning. All right. Okay, how about this needlepoint now? Okay. If at first you don't suck. Well, I certainly hope that's unfinished business. Yeah, it's probably not enough to keep her spirit roaming the earth. I doubt it. She'd come to you for something you could do. Well, I need a point. Oh, of course you do, darling. <laughs> this is really good work. Hello? Hello? Oh, Kitty! Uh, yeah, the door's open! Oh, What's she doing here? She called. She wants to borrow some clothes. Come on, what's she really doing here? She wanted to borrow some of my clothes. Oh, hello, dear. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry to come in the back way, but there's a rather large hole in your front yard. Yeah, sorry about that. Larry's digging a Y2K shelter. Isn't that resourceful? Yeah. When all the computers in the world stop working, he and I can go out and lie down in the hole. <laughs> Well, an ounce of prevention. <laughs> anyway, about the clothes. Well, oh, uh, you really are borrowing my mom's clothes? Why? Is that so odd? Okay, yeah, Kitty, that is so odd. Well, your mother always looks very comfortable, and I just thought that, um... Oh, heck. <laughs> Edward and I have been invited to a costume party, and I thought we would go as a couple of old hippies. <laughs> oh, I hope I haven't offended you. No. Why should I be offended? You just want to wear my everyday clothes as a Halloween costume. Yes! Yeah, well, okay. Let's go look. Just hope I can find something that's not way too big for you in the bust. Oh, I don't want to miss this. Honey, why are you still up? Oh, Greg, this is so sad. What are you reading? Doris's diary. She never married Greg. I think she died a virgin. Too bad you didn't know that. It would have added some color to the eulogy. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen. December 6, 1941. Good news. Fred will be home on leave soon. I've decided to give myself to him fully. I'll finally know what it means to be a woman. Also looking forward to hear more wonderful stories about Pearl Harbor. Oh. <laughs> Tough break. Yeah. Listen, three weeks later, still can't stop thinking about Fred. Mother suggested I cheer myself up with a new hat. Sounds like a good idea. Come on. Let's go to bed. <gasps> I'm finally going to lose my virginity. My cousin Nancy fixed me up with a handsome young actor, a Mr. Rock. Hudson! Hey, handsome. How'd you like a ride on the old gray mare? Are you smoking? I don't know. Why don't you take a look? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who sprinkled you with horny dust this morning? I just can't get last night out of my mind. Why? Right, what happened last night? Darn it, come on. The sex was unbelievable. It was more than unbelievable. It was... It was circus sex. Last night? I didn't know where you were going with the hat and the cigarette, but I'm glad you took me with you. I was smoking a cigarette? You're, you're kidding, right? No. I don't know what you're... Oh, my... I know what happened. Doris's unfinished business. <laughs> what? She never had sex, Greg, so she possessed my body. No, I see where this is going. <laughs> So she could have sex with you. Nope, that's not it. Abby said she'd come to me for something I was good at. <laughs> oh, isn't this wonderful?
wonderful, Greg. We helped her lose her virginity. No, Dharma, listen to me. You, you've been going through this woman's stuff. You've been staying up all night reading her diary. Don't you see what's happening here? Yes. You and I helped deflower a dead woman. <laughs> okay, so no, you don't get what's happening here. Darms, if you can hear me, I am so happy for you. Greg's good, isn't he? I wasn't good. <laughs> Stop it. You are always good. I bet she comes back for more. No, knock it off, Dharma. Wait a minute. Are you uncomfortable yes, with this? Yes, I'm very uncomfortable with this. Well, Greg, if that's how you feel, don't you think you should say something to her? Dharma, I can't talk to Doris. She's dead. Which is why we have seances, knucklehead. Uh, Uncle Abby. No, no seance. Okay, I can't believe you. You take a poor dead woman's virginity and now you won't talk to her? Shame. <laughs> Doris. We're calling Doris. We've been calling her for an hour. She's either not there or she's screaming. Maybe the problem is someone's not focused. Okay, everybody, let's just take a deep cleansing breath and open our hearts to make Doris feel welcome because remember, as strange as this is for us, it's even stranger for Doris. I don't think so. <laughs> Let's just clear our minds of all thought. Done. <laughs> Doris, if you can hear my voice, give us a sign. I got nothing. <laughs> because there is no ghost. Okay, perhaps you would like to explain to the group how you had the greatest sex of your life and I never woke up. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> Maybe subconsciously you felt guilty because you never got to know this old woman and that's what caused last night's business. I don't think that's it. Oh, come on, Dharma. I feel guilty, too. It's terrible how we ignore old people, but let's face it, we're busy. We, we, we don't have time to hear about their surgeries or how their kids never call or, or how much a tuna fish sandwich cost in 1923. <laughs> I said it's terrible. <laughs> Well, what do you think, Dharma? Do you think it could be an expression of your guilt? I don't know, Abby. That sounds a little blue. I think what probably happened is that after Doris had sex, she was ready to move on. My kind of woman. <laughs> oh, wow. Who else heard that? You! Oh, she sounds scary. It's my mother, Larry. I know who it is. <laughs> War is bad. Give me a handout. <laughs> okay, the Chevy is definitely in the levee now. What are you doing? Well, we are getting down with our funky selves. <laughs> Nespa? Nespa. <laughs> Your mom's borrowing my Birkenstocks, girl. Yeah, Mom, we're going to a costume party. <laughs> Don't we look silly? <laughs> Abby, when was the last time you wore this? Tuesday. <laughs> Shoes are on the bed, Kitty. Splendid. Hang loosely, Edward. <laughs> uh, what are you playing? We're having a seance to talk to a dead woman your son had sex with. <laughs> it's none of my business, Dharma, but if the woman's dead, can't this be water under the bridge? Oh, she was dead when he had sex with her. <laughs> We used to play a lot of cribbage in the army. One of the fellas made a board out of a gun butt. He drilled little holes in it and uh, used toothpicks as pegs. All set. Let's go. Later.
Dharma. 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 Are you all here? Dharma? Dharma? With the garbage? Sorry, all the dead chicks were taken. <laughs> Me and Jane had a fight. What are you doing? Don't! Hey. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Here's your pillow. <laughs> Jane, wait, 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 wait. Have you seen Dharma? No, why? No, I woke up and she was gone. No, oh, God! <laughs> that darn cat. Come on. Well, there she is. Gotta go. <laughs> took you so long. Dharma, what, what are you doing down here? Dharma's not here. So whatever happens is between you and me. Oh, come on, Dharma. <laughs> Cut it out. If you're not coming to Mama, then Mama's coming to you. Dharma, yeah. You're sleeping now, so please wake up. <laughs> no, God. <laughs> Clap on! <laughs> you didn't have time for me when I was alive. And now we're together till death do us part. And I'm already dead. Dharma. Wake up. Wake up! <laughs> This ought to be interesting. Uh. Honey, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Where are you going? Uh, it's not important. That explains why you're not wearing pants. Okay, look, um, there are uh, two possible things going on here. The first, and more likely, is that uh, Dharma and I are feeling a little bit guilty for not having gotten to know you better when you were alive. Um, uh, this, the second possibility, and which is kind of out there, um, and the one that, that brings me by, <laughs> is that I may have, uh, without realizing it, um, uh, led you on somehow. Um, anyway, I just want you to know that I'm married uh, to a wonderful woman, a, a living woman, and um, I hope that you and I can still be friends. Uh, Hello. Getting a lot of rain, huh? Uh, I suppose. Uh, listen. I, um, I, uh, 
I don't want us just to talk about the weather and go our separate ways. I, I want us to spend time together, make a real connection. Uh, I'm not a gay. <laughs> Me neither. Um, what about, what about breakfast? Just, just the two of us. Please let go. You, your kid's calling you enough. I hear you, Doris. And I understand you're upset. But if Greg doesn't want to continue in that kind of relationship, I think you have to respect that. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have another idea that it might work for everyone. They must have let the faucet on a long time when they poured a drink of water like you. Kitty? The name's Doris. But what do you say we have a little fun with Kitty's body, hmm? Well, that's a long shot, but I'm game. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy are going to a concert tonight, so we're going to be home late. Remember the rules. No roughhousing. You can use the microwave, but not the oven. And no going on the internet pretending you're 14-year-old girls, stinky. What do you think? Wow. They're, they're, they're my rock concert pants. Great. I always wear these to rock concerts. Excellent. I, I bought them 10 years ago for a Huey Lewis concert, but... They still fit. <laughs> they sure do. You're right. I look like an idiot. I'll go change. Hello. Hey, Jane. You getting ready to rock and roll? You're kidding. We've had these tickets for months. What's going on? Pete and Jane got into a fight, and now they can't go. It's Aerosmith. They can fight there. No one will hear them. <laughs> What's the fight about? Uh-huh. The recliner. Melted butter. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to go with Pete on that one. And enema is never a nice surprise. Uh -huh. What are they fighting about? The usual. <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll find somebody else. Bye. Well, got two extra tickets to Aerosmith. Which lucky friends should we call? Steve, uh, Greg Montgomery. Yeah, yeah, it has been a while. Listen, um, Darm and I have a couple of extra tickets to see Aerosmith tonight. You guys want to come? Oh, well, maybe next time. Okay, tell Elaine I said hi. Oh, of course. Marilyn. <laughs> Sorry. When did he divorce Elaine? Hey, Mad Dog, how's it hanging? Excellent. Listen, uh, Greg and I have a couple extra tickets to the Aerosmith concert tonight. Thought maybe you and the Big Beaver might want to join us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the concert's more than 90 feet away from your house. Okay, will you just give us a call when you get that ankle bracelet off? House arrest. I think. Huh. Oh, you want to just call some wrong numbers, see if we find anybody? <laughs> Now I met Jane. Are you sure? No listing under Spider McNamara. Okay, how about under Spidey? Uh, how about Spidey Macaroon? Okay, we'll check under his wife's name, Lorna Dune. Lorna Dune Macaroon. Hi, Arnold Zulak, please. Hey, Arnie, uh, Greg Montgomery. You remember from, from archery camp. Well, what do you think? Abby and Larry would love to see Aerosmith. No, we are grown-ups. We have our own friends. We don't have to go to a concert with your parents. Now, 
think. Okay, Abby, maybe some other time. <laughs> now what? put super glue on the button. <laughs> why did she do that? Yeah, I don't know. Because she's crazy is why. <laughs> Where is she now? I hope she's packing. I lost her in a card game. <laughs> oh, we definitely need new friends. Now, it was just one concert. Don't obsess about I'm it. I'm not obsessing, but, but think about it. Besides Jane and Pete, we have no couple friends we can go to concerts with or dinner or away for the weekend. And what about our kids? If we don't have couple friends who have kids, who are our kids going to play with? No one. They'll grow up to be sad, lonely people who talk to themselves and don't take care of their yards properly. Honey, we don't have kids. And we shouldn't until we get our act together. Okay. This is what I mean by obsessing. You know who could be our friends? Paul and Sarah Marsh. Sure, of course. Do we know a Paul and Sarah Marsh? He, he was a lawyer at the Justice Department. His wife's like a sculptor or something, and he always wanted us to get together. Well, they sound perfect. How many kids don't they have? <laughs> I can't believe you were at the Aerosmith concert, too. Where were you sitting? Mm, fifth row center. Eighth row center. Oh, were no you near that crazy woman who kept screaming... Turn it down! <laughs> um, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> uh, who's uh, ready for some dessert? Uh, oh, count me in. Just a minute. So, how did you two meet? Oh, well, see, well, do you want to tell it or should I? Go ahead. Okay, well, I was working at this coffee shop down the street from the Catholic seminary where Paul was going. Wait a minute. You were studying to be a priest? Uh-huh. Now, isn't that based on hearing some call from God? Well, yeah, I suppose. Okay, so God's calling, you put him on hold, and you go out with her. That is the most romantic love story I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, this is so cool. Okay, then let me ask you a question, Paul. How did you know that she was your true love and not some temptation set up by Satan to lure you away from God? I'm sorry. <laughs> In most religious traditions, there's always a test of faith. So how did you know that she wasn't just that? I mean, look at her. <laughs> if Satan were to set a trap, he'd certainly use a hotsy totsy piece of cheese like Sarah. I, I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, come on, you're gorgeous. You could make an archbishop by a lap dance. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. I have forsaken my true vocation and yielded to the temptations of the flesh. Grant that I might be your humble servant once again. Ah, uh, amen? Come on, how could I have known? He was weeping. I just asked a simple question. No, no, no. A simple question is, seen any good movies lately? Hot enough for you? Anything except, did you know your wife was sent by Satan? No, that is not fair. All I said was, did you ever consider the possibility that your wife was sent by Satan? <laughs> hey, Adrian. Can I use your shower? Sure. Okay. Anything wrong? You look a little blue. My idiot husband put dye in the showerhead. Jane, why are you walking around naked? Because I'm going to take a shower. You know what happened to 
Metropolitan's here tonight was going to happen eventually. Yeah, yeah, maybe 20 years from now. In the meantime, we would have had friends. A fallen priest in the devil's handmaiden. <laughs> have you guys seen Jane? No. No. Okay, sorry to bother you. <laughs> Look, whatever happened, happened, but I think we can agree that Paul and Sarah are not going to be our new couple friend. Oh, yeah, I think that's safe to say. <laughs> Maybe it's time we stop digging through the address book and start going out and meeting new people. And how do you propose we do that? Well, let's think. What are we looking for in friends? Are you sure? There's a blue footprint and right at your door. <laughs> Maybe she backtracked. Tricky little mix. Well, we know what we're not looking for. Well, nice meeting you. Enjoy your stay in America. Auf Wiedersehen. Later, Hosen. Okay, we're 0 for 4. You want to go back to Ikea? No. Oh, what about a Volvo dealership? I don't think so. Nine o'clock, Dockers in a blue sweater. Aren't we kind of robbing the cradle? So? They'll keep us young and we'll buy them beer. <laughs> Follow my lead. Do you have a plan? No. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? You guys come here often? We're members. Members? <laughs> Did you hear that? They're members. <laughs> Say something. Uh, uh, y your pants are like my pants. <laughs> Just walk away. <laughs> your pants are like my pants? <laughs> Ready. Uh, I made your plate. Macaroni and cheese? I thought we were supposed to go to dinner with these people. Yeah, but you don't want to eat like a pig and make a bad first impression. Okay. Wait a minute. Is that what you're going to wear? Yeah. I can see your belly button. What are they going to think? I don't know. That I was fed through an umbilical cord and I'm out of it? Um, let, let, let's take a sweater. Hey, you never told me. How'd you hook up with this couple? Um, they were, uh, they were recommended. Recommended? By who? By whom? Greg, answer the question. My mother. Oh, we got fixed up by your mom? Like we were doing so well on our own? Greg, are we that lame? If we were horses, they would shoot us. saw each other? That's amazing! So did we! Did you ever think we'd meet another couple we had that in common with? You came from catalog too? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I met Betty through a service. You mean a dating service? Mm, I think he means more like the postal service. <laughs> Got her mail order. The Russian girls are real popular now, but you don't want one of those big bone gals walking on your back. <laughs> Forgive me for being judgmental, but don't you feel exploited by this arrangement? Oh, no. I don't have to sleep with him. I just tie him up and call him names. <laughs> he liked that very much. <laughs> Ain't that right, stinky boy? <laughs> How exactly do you know my mother? I do her nails. Uh -huh. Oh, she got a bad feet. <laughs> Too many corns. Maybe we should order. Where the, where the heck's a waiter? Mm. You want to see good feet? Show them your feet, sissy man. <laughs> well, that was 
pretty unpleasant. Stinky boy did have beautiful feet. <laughs> we should thank your mom. Uh huh. Maybe buy her some corn pads. <laughs> Problem? Yeah, no, we're all right. I have AAA. Oh shoot. Great, dead battery. Oh, here. Uh, use mine. Oh, thanks. Uh, that AAA is number four on the speed dial. Not number one. I went alphabetically. I considered that. <laughs> Sweet car. Oh, thanks. My husband hates her. Why? Well, he says she stalls out a lot. Of course, it's only when he's driving. Mm-hmm. Think maybe she doesn't like him? Wouldn't be surprised. He's always talking about trading her in. Well, there you go. Her feelings are hurt. Classic grudge stall. <laughs> What's her name? Sally. Of course. Greg, the Mustang's name is Sally. Isn't that cute? My wife's idea. I understand. We have a toaster named Pop-Up Willie. <laughs> Greg. Doug. Dharma. Cynthia. Doug. Dharma. Cynthia. Greg. Sally. <laughs> <laughs> No messages. What? Yesterday I left a message for Cynthia and Doug on their machine about dinner tonight and they never called back. Huh. I didn't get an answer to the email I sent Doug about playing golf. <sighs> That's weird. Uh, d d not, not too eager. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Cynthia. We were just talking about you. Ta, you ta. <laughs> Well, we were discussing the states, and, well, we're almost done. Listen, how's dinner tonight for you guys? Oh. Uh, okay, well, what about tomorrow? I think we're free tomorrow. Oh. Well, what about Sunday? No, I take it back. Sunday's bad. We are definitely booked on Sunday. Unless you're free, then we could probably shuffle some stuff around. <laughs> okay, um, well, you'll just call us, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Bye-bye. They blew us off. They, they, they didn't blow us off. They probably just have other plans. Oh, wake up and smell the kiss off. We've been dumped. Well, we have been. It's not completely out of the blue. I mean, you have been coming on pretty strong. What? You invited them to meet your parents. Don't you think it's a little soon for that? Well, excuse me, but I'm not the one who used the L word. What? We love you guys. We love you guys. You said it like 12 times. I'd had a couple of glasses of wine. It felt kind of good to say it. Well, I hope you're happy because now you scared them off. So, we, we don't know that. They're probably having a quiet dinner by themselves. Let's find out. 
Charming, you can't call somebody up and ask them if they're dumping you. Right. But we can go see what they're doing without us. Oh, oh you mean stalk them? No, stalking is what crazy people do. We are not crazy. <laughs> We're just going to see if they're cheating on us. Oh, well, that, that's reasonable. I can't believe you lost them. Well, if we'd taken my car instead of your father's dumb van, I wouldn't have lost them. They know your car. And what did I tell you about calling this van D-U-M-B? Oh, oh, there's the Mustang. Pull over, pull over. See him anywhere? All clear. <laughs> Still warm. <laughs> they're close. Do you think they're in there? The restaurant we took them to? They wouldn't. Doug, I'll get rid of the Mustang when you stop smoking those awful cigars. Needless to say, the car stays. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! Dharma. Cynthia. Greg. Doug. Doug. Dharma. <laughs> what have we here? Uh, these are our friends, Richard and Patricia. Richard and Patricia. Isn't that nice? <laughs> are you enjoying your little dinner? What are you guys doing here? What are we doing here? This is our restaurant. What are they doing here? They're our friends. Is that so? Did you hear that, Greg? They're their friends. Dharma, honey, I think maybe we crossed some kind of line here. We thought we had something with you people. What is she talking about? Um, I don't know. I, I thought I knew, but it, it turns out I don't. Dharma, honey, time to go. Here. Obviously, this meant nothing to you. For the record, I love you guys. It's just a figure of speech. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, it's kind of silly. It's so true. We have so many friends. Abby, popcorn. Oh, we brought our own. Real butter. <laughs> Imaginary friend, I bet she's married by now. Give her a call. <laughs> Help! Help! There's a pirate after my precious doubloon! Ah, come back here, Wendy! Come on! Oh, 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 oh. Are you okay? I, I stubbed my toe. I'm gonna oh. take the eye patch off. Oh, Greg! Then you're just a naked guy with a stuffed parrot on his shoulder. All right, all right. I'll put it back on. But you have to slow down. Okay, but promise on your honor there'll be no monkey business. I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you swear on your honor. Ah, pirates have no honor. <laughs> Ooh, that's quite a bird you've got there. Thank you. And I like your parrot, too. <laughs> you drag us to this third world petri dish be patient it grows on you oh i'll bet it does well couldn't we at least find a clean table 
Not here. Derma, I think I saw a Board of Health notice out front. You probably did. Derma, I cannot possibly stay here. Hang on. Hang on for what? Hey, good afternoon, ladies. Oh. oh. Yeah, the specials are on the board. I'm sure they are. Get back, Loretta. <laughs> Stop it. Still want to leave? Well, we're here. <laughs> oh, this is bad karma. I'm going to get pinched in Italy. <laughs> I must say, I do think it is a bit inappropriate for a group of married women to be ogling an, uh, admittedly magnificent young man. Kitty, I love Greg, and there will never be anyone else for me. But if I'm not free to appreciate a handsome man, then I'm not free to appreciate a beautiful sunset, or a magnificent painting. Or that ass. <laughs> or those arms. Oh, those smoky eyes that seem to burn into the depths of your soul as if they knew exactly what you had been missing all these years. Whoa, who ordered the ugly truth? Kitty, is there something you'd like to share with us? Yeah, aren't you getting everything from Edward you need in the bedroom? Isn't that a rather personal question, Dharma? Oh, yes. Well, you might say that uh, after a certain time, the dance does become... The routine, and one can do the steps in one's sleep. And to be frank, occasionally one does. You know, if you're looking for a way to spice things up, maybe I can help you out. Kitty. Oh. oh. I keep a very detailed journal of everything Greg and I do in the sack, and I'd be happy to lend it to you. Well, I am right in the middle of Angela's ashes, but as soon as I finish that, it will be my next read. I... Jane, are you all right? She's fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey. You want the god for souvlaki? Oh, no, Jane, I got a situation here. You do know that by souvlaki I meant Greek waiter butt. I know, I just can't. What's wrong? I'm going through my sex journal for Kitty. Crossing out things that might kill Edward? <laughs> when I started to notice something. On the 11th of every month, Greg surprises me in the shower and we have amazing, wonderful sex. Yeah, so? Okay, check this out. And this was not easy to figure out. We have fun with food sex every time there's a space shuttle launch. <laughs> Maple syrup, whipped cream, loaf of bread. What did he do with a loaf of bread? Dharma sandwich. <laughs> Don't you see, Jane? There's a pattern here. Wait a minute. Everything you guys do is planned out months in advance. I don't plan out sex. I'm a free-range chicken. <laughs> but Greg, look. Are you going to say something to him? Oh, I can't say anything until I'm absolutely sure. How are you going to find out? <sighs> Science, Jane. Science. <laughs>
okay. Is that, is that fun for you? Oh, yeah. You shivered me timbers. Are you sure? Because you, you seem like you weren't really into it. No, no, no. I always love Pirate Night. Because I can drop the whole buried treasure. No, thing. that's my favorite part. Okay. okay. The X could mark a different spot from time to time. What? Nothing. Sat on the parrot. <laughs> Hey, is Stavos getting a little hippie, or is it the pants? Jane, focus. My sex life is in crisis. I don't understand why you're so upset. Nothing's really changed. Are you kidding? How would you feel if you were 99% sure you were going to have sex on the beach tonight? Sweaty. A little nervous. <laughs> I'm just saying there's things we're better off not knowing. Like what? Like, would it ruin it for you if you found out that Stavros was a doctor back home and he was just working here until he got his American license? Are you saying Stavros is smart? He's a surgeon. You take that back. He's dumb and hunky and you know it. See, nothing's changed, but now it doesn't work for you, right? No, it doesn't. Why would you do that? <laughs> just trying to make a point. Stavros, come here. Where is my medulla oblongata? Coming right up. We make fresh for you. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. So the doctor says, kiss you, Mrs. Johnson. I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> That's not the way I heard it. The way I heard it, the woman's name was Mrs. Taylor. Really? And how'd that one go? Well, there was this woman, Mrs. Taylor, and she goes to visit her gynecologist. Would you two stop? It's the same damn joke. Jiminy Christmas. What crawled into your pup tent? You're not still bent out of shape because I beat you, right? No, I don't care about that. So I didn't cheat. I said I didn't care. Well, except on 14, but you knew that. Pete. Well, Where's that ball you lost in the woods? No, I don't care about the golf. It's Dharma and me. We're just having a little trouble. It's it's not important. What kind of trouble? Your house looks clean. <laughs> it's personal, all right? Ah, the honeymoon's over, huh? No, we still have sex all the time. It's just the last couple of weeks she seemed detached. But you still have sex all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and your house is still clean. <laughs> Can we please not talk about this? Look, son, I've been married a long time uh, to your mother. <laughs> and one thing I've learned is that passion comes and goes. And when it goes, you've got to stay the course. Stay the course? Stay the course. Do your duty as a husband, and someday her passion will return. How long does that take? I'll let you know. <laughs> This is Mrs. Taylor. She's up in the Hi. Hey. For you. Thank you. This is unexpected. What's the occasion? No occasion, just because I love you. Wow, this is so spontaneous of you. <laughs> Hey, you know what I was thinking? How would I know what you were thinking? <laughs> Why don't we take a little drive, maybe down the coast, get some linguine at that little place on the pier? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would be. And maybe afterwards we can take a walk down by the water. And make love on the beach? See, you well, did know what I was thinking. I'll get the blankets. <laughs> oh, God, when will this nightmare end? <laughs> So you had sex on the beach? Mm-hmm, and it was really romantic. Honey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what should I do, Abby? Greg has scheduled every moment of our sex life. Well, not consciously, Dharma. It's not his fault, it's just his nature. Come on. Are you telling me Greg is pre-programmed to sip champagne out of my belly button every time PBS has a fundraising drive? <laughs> Looks that way. Should I say something to him? <laughs> what would you tell him? 
I don't know that it's hard to get all worked up about a guy sucking on your toes when you know he's only doing it because his car got waxed. Those don't sound like helping words, Dharma. Well, isn't there anything I can do? Forgive me for suggesting behavior modification, but maybe there's a way that you could gently sway him from his schedule. And if that doesn't work? Then you find a way to love him. Flaws and all. <laughs> No, Gene, I can't tonight. It's movie makeout night. Whew. No, I can't say anything to him. I might traumatize him. I care. Well, I'm gonna try some subtle behavior modification. Dharma, movie starting. Oh, coming. I gotta go. Sorry, phone call. That's okay. We've got all night. <laughs> were you, uh... Were you cooking something? Stay the course, son. Stay the course. Come here, you. <laughs> Love him, Dharma. Flaws and all. I'm telling you, Pete, I'm doing everything I can, but it just keeps getting worse and worse. Last night, I swear, she took a bath in sour milk just so I would leave her alone. Did you? Of course not. I, I love her. I, you know, stayed the course. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your woman makes love to you every night and she's just going through the motions. That can only mean one thing. She's covering up an affair. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yo, buddy. A guy's wife makes love to him every night, but she's bored from the poke to the smoke. She's cheating on him. Really? <clears throat> How about you? Your wife's doing you every night, but she's bored from the chitty to the bang bang. Sounds like a classic case of marital infidelity. Thank you. <clears throat> and what do you think? Ta, runway, ta, tai, tai. Yo, why you? Why you tell about yards, huh? Someone else is cooking your old lady's duck. I'm sorry, man. I, I can't believe that. Not, not Dharma. I'm going home. Hey, that ever with you, oh? You push on your chin, yeah, oh? Best to call first. You don't want any nasty surprises. Thank you. Hey, Jay Renan, you didn't see that. Probably it's someone you know. Thank you. Shenzai will think the dong. Nigan with the same thing. Dharma? Hey! Where have you been? I stopped and had a beer with Pete. Listen, is there anything that you and I need to talk about? What do you mean? Come on, something's going on. You figured out what I've been up to, huh? I'm not sure. Why don't you tell me? Look, it's not your fault. I'm the one with the problem. But I'm afraid if I go over the details with you, it's just going to make you feel worse. How can you be so casual about this? It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not like it was premeditated. So we're just supposed to go on like nothing's happening? Honey, we could talk about this all night, but we both know what's coming next, so why don't we just get to it? Where are you going? I want you to meet someone. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, Father Christmas, Mama Cass, drop your pants, I'll spank your... Greg?
You're asking me that. Why are you dressed like a cheerleader? Because every time you get your alumni newsletter, you like to play big man on campus, and I thought the outfit would help. How did you know about the newsletter thing? I told you. I figured out your schedule. Is, is that what's been going on? Yeah. What did you think had been going on? Um, nothing. Or that. I, I kind of thought it was that. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get used to it. I mean, it's not like you were doing it on purpose. Wait, you think what I was doing was unconscious? What do you think I am, some kind of freak? So you actually sat down one day and made up that schedule? Oh, God, no. It took weeks. Why? Because when... When we got married, I figured you were, you know, a little more advanced, maybe, than me, and, and, and I... I had to come up with a way to keep you, you know, interested. What? Tell a guy like me goes out with Allison's and Emily's and Catherine's, and, and you're a Dharma. It was a little intimidating. Get out of town, really? Really? Wow. You'd kill an Emily now. <laughs> Listen, I know that I should have, uh, I should have given this up a long time ago, but, it, you know, it was put a lot of work into it, and it was kind of doing the job. Well, what do you say we toss the map and do a little off-roading? Absolutely. But uh, can we start tomorrow? Because the jewelry thing's kind of working for me. I know, I look pretty cute, don't I? Yeah. And then, do, you, do you buy it or rent it? Oh, no, I rented it. Oh, we should buy it. Uh, we'll save money in the long run. <laughs> It's in the doctor's office, right? Now, excuse me, gentlemen. I'll have you know, my wife was not having an affair. She was just distracted because she figured out that I schedule each and every sexual move I make. <laughs> you didn't consider that, did you? I guess we're the idiots, huh? So anyway, Mrs. Taylor's up in the store. Come in. I didn't know you delivered. So now what do I do? You told me I wasn't allowed to take off the apron. I also told you not to speak. Okay. Uh, what do you, you want me to go out and come back in again? Yes. Uh, Kitty. What? Am I supposed to have the baklava with me? Yes. <laughs> Come in. My, my, my. I didn't know you delivered. What's the baklava for? <laughs> Global warming? It rocks. It's called Indian summer. 
Oh. Well, thanks for that. And corn, I guess. <laughs> I'm Dharma. This is Jane. George. Nice to meet you. Hey. So what brings you up here, George? I've come here to die. This land was my ancestor's sacred burial site. For real? For real. Well, we're sunbathing topless, so you'll die happy. <laughs> <laughs> tasting kibble. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? What? Tomorrow night, the Attorney General of the United States is taking me to dinner because, and I quote, I don't think I've met that Montgomery guy yet. <laughs> she knows my name! <laughs> shut up! No, you shut up. <laughs> Janet Reno's taking you to dinner. Janet Reno's buying me a shrimp cocktail. <laughs> okay, this sounds kind of shallow. But I kind of want you more now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dharma, uh, why is there an elderly Native American gentleman wearing my bathrobe? Oh! I prefer Indian. George, this is Greg. Greg, this is George. Hello. Hello. Mm. Good night. Good night? George is going to stay with us for a little while. What? Just till he dies. Two, three days, Tops. <laughs> Dharma, can I see you for a second? George, do you need anything? No, I said good night. <laughs> um, what's going on? Oh, well, I met George on the roof. And he said he's dying, and he has to do it here so that the spirits of his ancestors can find him and help guide his soul to a place of peace. Dharma, don't you think that's a bit incredible? Totally incredible. It's awesome. <laughs> no, come on. A, a complete stranger comes up to you on the street, the roof. And, th the roof, and says, I don't know you, but can I die in your apartment? Maybe it sounds bad when you say it. <laughs> Besides, Greg, he didn't ask. I, I invited him. Honey, look. You're a very trusting person, and I love that about you. But there are people out there who prey on people like you. I know that. George is not one of them. How do you know? No, I just know. I have a feeling. But you can't take a risk like this just because you have a feeling. Why not? I did it with you. <laughs> Heck, I married you on our first date. Fine. Make a good point. <laughs> so he can stay. One night. Look at that, your whole aura just changed. Shut up. Now you shut up. <laughs> Why don't you both shut up? <laughs> well, check on aliases, but for now, just run George Little Fox. Okay, I'll hold. I'd do it for you, that's all I'm saying. Pete, you're not coming to dinner with Janet Reno and me. Oh, come on, Greg. I mean, you're a good lawyer. You're going to move up because you win cases. Me? I mean, I gotta kiss some ass <laughs> the attorney general of the united states i mean they don't get any bigger you know what slap on some chapstick you talk me into it really get lost all right i'll be back though. that you will what do you mean he doesn't exist he's in my house no, no, Little Fox, not Litter Box. What kind of an Indian name is Litter Box? Well, there's got to be something on the guy. All right, call me back. Hello, hello. Mother, what are you doing here? What, do I need a reason to come and visit my handsome son? Mother. Hmm? All right, I'm absolutely desperate. The guest speaker at my botanical garden fundraiser has backed out, and I know that you are having dinner this evening with Janet Reno. So I was wondering no. if I... It doesn't hurt to ask. Mother, I really don't feel comfortable asking Janet Reno for a favor. For God's sakes, Gregory, why are you so intimidated by powerful women? <laughs> All right, how about 
this. I'm at another table. I choke on a crouton. You Heimlich me. Sure, I get to meet Janet Reno, but you're the big hero. You're too late. Miss Reno is speaking at my fundraiser. Well, that's no fair. I have dibs. You cannot have dibs on the attorney general. She's mine. Yeah? You willing to choke for her? Because I'm not going to fake it. Okay, you guys, I have the perfect solution. I go to dinner with Janet Reno. You hate me. You be disappointed in me. And somehow, I live with it. Oh, I don't suppose you would know anybody who would speak at a botanical garden function. I don't even know anybody who would listen. George, you don't have to do that. I know. No, 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 no. You don't want to spend your last days on Earth doing dishes. Don't you want to do something fun? Like what? I don't know. Is there anything you've ever wanted to do? You know Debbie Reynolds? <laughs> no. Well, I'm okay here. Hi, everybody. What are you guys doing here? Well, Greg called and asked us to check up on you. He asked you to check up on me? And what else did he ask us, Larry? Not to tell Dharma. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. Ah, it's no big deal, honey. He's worried about you. If I had a nickel for every time that I asked a neighbor to check in on your father, I could rebuild the garage he burned down. Would you drop it? That was months ago. George, I want you to meet my parents. This is Abby. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you. And this is Larry. Sir, I would like to apologize for all the injustices your people have suffered at the hands of my people. Larry, Larry, your people were in Latvia being chased by Cossacks. But if they were here, they would have joined in. <laughs> my people are joiners, and for that I apologize. Apology accepted. Sorry about that. Last week he apologized to a Chinese waiter for a half hour for making him build the railroads. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Little Fox, um, we understand that you're leaving the physical realm, and I am a student of indigenous cultures, and if there's anything I can do to help, I've been told that I do a very moving Paiute death chant. He's not Paiute. Oh, Oh, jeez, is my face red. <laughs> you ought to see it now. Do you mind if we just sit here and share your vibe? Okay, you guys, you're embarrassing me in front of my friend. I think George just needs some quiet time to himself now. Yeah, I know, but isn't there going to be some sort of death ritual? I mean, I have all my drums and gourds in the van. Actually, I do have some rituals I must perform. Oh, cool. All right. So what are they? Well, before I go, I must take the feathers from my headdress and let them loose in the wind. And at sunset, I must smoke a ceremonial pipe. Uh-huh. What do you put in that pipe? <laughs> Tobacco. Larry, this is his ritual. Yeah. Um, so what else do you need, Mr. Little Fox? Some beetroot to paint my face. How about love that red? Could work. Good. Okay. So, headdress, uh, pipe, face paint. What else? I must wrap myself in the skin of a bear. I'm sorry, Mr. Little Fox, but we don't condone the killing of animals for any purpose. The killing of Indians we had no problem with. <laughs> give it a rest, Lear, okay? I won't give it a rest. We took this man's land and cast him out into the desert. And believe me, my people know about deserts. Forty years we wandered through I one. Know. I know, and that's why we can't have an Egyptian car. <laughs> place to get a bearskin rug. What? Oh, you're taking George? Don't worry, he's leaving his vibe. Leave your vibe. <laughs> oh, wow, I can feel it. Hey, oh. don't bogart that vibe. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. Your father's very amusing. <laughs> Thank you. And your mother's very patient. Oh, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Now, this bearskin rug of mine is very valuable. When might I expect him to return it? Oh, uh, that's the thing, Edward. He's going to be buried in it. This guy here, he's not even dead. <laughs> oh, he will be by, what do you say, George, Saturday? I'm hoping Friday. I don't want to ruin your weekend. 
I'm confused here. Uh, what the hell's wrong with a casket? Oh, I have had it with politicians. Perhaps I could find a prominent businessman to speak at my function. I'd be happy to do it. Yes, well, let's not panic just yet. Dama? Who is your friend? You are Kitty. Dama. Oh, this is George. He wants to die in my rug. <laughs> okay. Hand it over. Greg, what are you doing here? Dharma, on your way over when you stopped at the bank, Mr. Little Fox here Followed went into... Followed me? No, no, of course not. I called a friend of mine at the FBI. You had me followed by the FBI? Because that's who I know who follows people. <laughs> Dharma, he went into a knife store. Yeah, I know, Greg. He was getting the handle on his hunting knife fix. He wanted to give it to you as a present for letting him stay in our house. God, I'm so sorry about this, George. That's all right. Your husband really loved you. Oh, yeah, right. If he loves me so much, he should trust me. Dharma. No, don't even start, Greg. First you have me followed, and then you just rush on in here like a big old macho cowboy. Uh, don't say cowboy in front of the Indian. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a big Dallas fan. I just... What? I, I, I don't even... What, God, I can't even talk to you right now. So, you are a Native American person. Yes. And you're dying. Thursday or Friday. Does that mean you're free this evening? Sorry I caused you so much trouble. No. It's not your fault my own husband doesn't trust my judgment. Well, you can't blame him. He spends all his time with lawyers and criminals. Half of them you can't trust, and the other half are criminals. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. I think I'll use it in my speech. There you, go. There you are. Oh, what is he wearing? I said traditional dress. Kitty, it's Brooks Brothers. It came with a vest. Oh, no, I meant headdress, fur, leather, jewelry. Sounds like your friends. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, we, we, we've got at least this little scarf we can put on him. And, uh, oh, oh, here, my necklace. Put this on. All right. Oh, this is nice. Yes, well, I'm going to need this back. Well, I get to keep the bearskin rug, right? Oh, yes, that's the deal. <laughs> now, you keep him here and make sure that he has some good stories. I remember when Three Com Park was called Candlestick Park. <laughs> That was three years ago. That long? Oh, good Lord, he's just an old man in a suit. <laughs> I told you she's fun to mess with. <laughs> this place is nice. Yeah. Wish we'd have been better fighters. George, the sun's going down. Here. Oh, thank you. I can't believe your father made this from a table leg. He's a man of many talents. No, really, it's just the one. <laughs> Excuse me. There's no smoking here. But we're outside. I'm aware of that. But there's a city ordinance that prohibits smoking in public places. Oh. Well, how about if we go over there where there's no people? No. OK, what if we go to the parking no. lot? <laughs> well, where can you smoke? Las Vegas. <laughs> This is this man's sacred ritual. Oh, I understand. It was my sacred ritual for 12 years. But I quit and so can he. He doesn't need to quit. He's dying. Hmm, a connection maybe? <laughs> hmm, jerk face schmucko loser maybe? What are you doing? Leave him alone. Give me that. Hey, oh, you think you're so tough taking a pipe away from a dying man? See how you do with a six-foot blonde bag and kick your ass. You look nice. Thanks. Really nice. Stop sucking up. That's all I have. Can you take a message for me? Well, a favor? Yeah, sure thing. No problem. Don't have to ask me twice. Greg Montgomery's office. I'll put a good word in for you. Now, hold on. Dharma's in jail. You gotta go bail her out. Pete, you're not coming to dinner with Janet Reno. Take the call. Montgomery. 
Okay, I'll be right there. Pete, you're going to dinner with Janet Reno. <laughs> yes! I, I mean, I'm sorry about Dharma and everything, but... Yes. <laughs> I need a favor. Another favor? What is it with you? You've got to cover for me. Janet Reno can't find out why I missed the dinner. What am I supposed to tell her? Pete, you're a lawyer. Lie. <laughs> but I'm a bad lawyer. So what exactly is the formal charge? Smoking in a public place. Right on. We are so proud of you. For violating the smoking ordinance? For violating any ordinance. Larry, I think I voted for that one. So what? We should protest all laws, especially those we believe in. We cannot be slaves to our own beliefs. There you are. Uh, hi, Sergeant uh, Greg Montgomery, Justice Department. There's the paperwork. What are you doing here? Bailing you out. Are you nuts? This is San Francisco. Do you know how hard it is to get arrested in this town? You're supposed to be having dinner with Janet Reno. Yeah, funny thing. I was on my way out the door when I got a phone call. Did you call him? Absolutely not. Well, how did you find... You're having me followed again? Then it's a good thing, too. God, you are unbelievable. Dharma, I knew this guy would cause trouble. But he didn't cause trouble, Greg. I caused trouble. That's my girl. <laughs> oh, good. There you are. I already bailed her out, Mother. Splendid. But I'm looking for the um, Native American fellow. He prefers Indian. Oh, why don't these people just pick something and stick with it? <laughs> Where is he? I thought he was with you. No. Oh, Lord, he's vanished. Oh, no, he couldn't have just vanished. But if he's a shaman, he could have turned into a squirrel and scurried away. Did you check in the trees? <laughs> I would have noticed a squirrel wearing a $5,000 necklace. You gave him your necklace? Yes. And a bearskin rug, a $200 speaking fee, and a Brooks Brothers suit. I knew it. I never should have trusted this guy. Ah, you never did. And I was right. No, you weren't. I'm sure he's just at the apartment. Why would he go back to the apartment? He doesn't have a key. Wrong again. You gave him a key? Great! He's probably cleaned out the entire place by now! Oh. Oh, I loved that necklace. Well, think about how he feels. We took all his land, and again, all he winds up with is a string of beads. <laughs> he's probably got my computer and the TV and your new mountain bike. Yeah, and... Greg, he's riding over the Golden Gate Bridge right now, watching cartoons and sending email. <laughs> I just want to see your face when you open the door and he's not there. He'll be there. Fine, open the door. I will. Let's see? He's probably just upstairs. George! Dharma! George! Hold on! George! He's not here, Dharma! That's Greg! Look, the TV's here, and then the stereo's here, and then the computer. This means he was smart enough not to come back. He's still got the necklace and the money he's and coming the... back. Oh, come on, Dharma, admit it. He ripped us off. Now. I know you want to trust everyone, but you can't. You just can't. That's not the world we live in. Fine, you're right. Does that make you happy? Is that what you want to hear? You're right. Dharma? Dharma? didn't get to say goodbye. Okay. He was here all by himself. Okay. No, it's not okay, Greg. I was supposed to help him. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, his headdress. didn't get to finish his ritual. I was supposed to... He's supposed to let the feathers go out into the wind. Now would be a really bad time to say I told you so.
know, I graduated at the top of my class from Stanford, and uh, well, I could have gone anywhere, but I said to myself, Greg Montgomery, you've got to work for the Justice Department. Give something back to the people. Ms. Reno, is that your foot? It's a big foot.